Now, the most vulnerable part of our cells are what are called mitochondria. Have you heard of mitochondria? Okay, mitochondria are the little organelles inside of a cell that take glucose and oxygen and very efficiently produce a lot of ATP. ATP is the energy currency in biological systems. So if you want this pump to work on the cell membrane, you need you know, four ATP a second or whatever it is, and this one is 35, and, you know, and that's what it is. So it's the currency of biological energy. So the main factories for that are the, are the mitochondria. So mitochondria are dispersed in plenty around the cell. Now, because they have oxygen in there, they are flammable, metaphorically speaking. You know, just like um, somebody who's got an oxygen mask on has been encouraged not to smoke a cigarette. Okay, same kind of thing, so it's flammable. Okay, so what happens is oxygen produces oxidative byproducts, which are damaging. And that's why mitochondria are replaced so frequently, they are the only organelle in the cell that has its own DNA. It does not rely on the DNA of the nucleus of the cell. It has its own DNA, which, by the way, we inherit from our mothers. So your longevity is based on your maternal history. But no one even knows their maternal history because our mothers are eating junk and living an unnatural lifestyle. So we don't know how long they would have lived had they. So fa I never take a family history. It is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Absolutely irrelevant. So these, or these, these, these are the organelles that are responsible for the production of energy because it's the energy that keeps the cell to do whatever it allows the cell to do what it's going to do. Now, since they are vulnerable, if we are if we are, if, if the cells are living in a sea of toxins, these toxins are getting through the membrane and affecting the cell, the organelles that are the most, that are going to go first, that are the most vulnerable, are the mitochondria. When you lose a certain critical mass of mitochondria, now you have to, the cell's going to die because it no longer has the energy necessary to keep on its metabolic functions. What does the body do? The body does what it always does. It, get, it starts doing a homeostatic dance to keep us alive. And the homeostatic dance in, this, in the face of this situation is to go into a fermentation or glycolysis. Okay? Glycolysis or fermentation is what our body does when it is unable to metabolize with oxygen. So you are not a regular runner. And you get up and you run about two blocks. At the end of the two blocks, your thighs are on fire, aching. <laughs> Why are they on fire? Because you exceeded your aerobic capacity and now your body had to, your body went into stay alive, your, to stay alive, your body went into glycolysis or anaerobic metabolism or fermentation, all the same thing. And what's the byproduct of fermentation? Lactic acid. So that lactic acid is burning you. Okay? So, what do you do? You stop and go <sighs> And when you do that, you're blowing off carbon dioxide, which balances out the acid, the pH. Now, because your body, because the cells in your muscles are still have plenty of mitochondria, you go back to aerobic metabolism. In cancer, they don't have the mitochondria. They've been beaten up. And so they can't. And so they stay into a chronic lactic acid production, and uh, they are um, um, ferment, uh, chronic fermentating cells. Now, when a cell is getting its energy through fermentation uh, and it's not using oxygen, remember nature is absolutely efficient and only acts out of necessity. Now, it no longer needs antioxidant enzymes, so it gets rid of them. But it does need, now what? Because remember, in glycolysis, fermentation, one molecule of glucose only produces two ATPs. Whereas in aerobic metabolism, one molecule of glucose with the oxygen produces 38 ATPs. That's a big difference. In fact, it's 19 times different. So cancer cells are 19 times less efficient at energy production. So to survive, they need 19 times more fuel, more glucose. That's why cancer feeds on sugar. That's why we do PET scans. When we do a PET scan, what do we do? We inject fluorodeoxyglucose, which is a radioactive glucose, and then we scan the person and we look wherever there's a rapid uptake. If the uptake of glucose is high enough, then we can say that <clears throat> there's, a, there's a metastatic focus. There's a piece of cancer here, a piece of cancer there, a piece of cancer there. We're looking at its metabolism, okay, based on glucose. And then you go to that same doctor and he says, it doesn't matter what you eat. It doesn't matter what I eat. You mean I can eat sugar? Absolutely, no problem. 
How come you didn't want me to have sugar? How come I had to come in fasting for this test? Don't ask me these questions. I went to medical school. <laughs>